fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth next verse so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them 28th and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth can somebody shout a great amen so god said let us make man and let them have dominion let us make man and let them have dominion so we began to deal with the fact that man's dominion is over things and over evil spirits god said let them have dominion over the fowls over the fishes over the birds and over everything that moveth upon the earth when jesus rose from the dead he said all power is given unto me i give you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil never have we ever seen where man was given authority over another man matthew 20 25 but jesus called unto them and said you know that the princes of the gentiles exercise dominion over them and they that are great exercise authority upon them but it shall not be so among you but whosoever will be great among you let him be your minister and whosoever will be chief among you let him be your servant even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many god's plan from the beginning of time has never been for man to rule man it has always been for mankind to exercise dominion over things and over evil spirits that's very important don't ever forget that because that is key now in exodus 19 5 now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant god's plan then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine next verse and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of israel now that has been god's plan from the beginning of time to produce a kingdom of priests not one man ruling over another and like we saw from history when god created man there was no human government human government started somewhere down the road in the book of genesis it was not part of god's original plan it began with a man called peleg it was Pilate that brought about the organization of different societies and the setting up of human authorities over men. It was not God's plan from the beginning of time. Revelation chapter 1 verse number 5. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Next verse. And that made us kings and priests unto god and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen in exodus he said you will give to me a kingdom of praise after jesus died and rose on his resurrection he has made all of us kings and priests equal revelation chapter 5 verse 10 and has made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth we shall collectively reign on the earth nobody reigning over another all of us are kings and priests that was god's plan from the beginning that has been god's plan that still is god's plan and that will continue to be god's plan forever that all of us shall be a kingdom of kings and priests unto our god not kings and priests over one another kings and priests unto our god now that was god's plan but man decided to differ from god's plan first samuel chapter 8 verse 5 and god said unto him behold thou art old and thy sons walk not in thy ways now make us a king to judge us like all the nations this was man requesting for god to give them a king this was not god giving them a king it is man's request all right next verse but the thing displeased samuel when they said give us a king to judge over us and samuel prayed unto the lord 
and the lord said unto samuel hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee for they have not rejected thee but they have rejected me that i should reign over them i have my own plan the way i want to function with them but they have rejected my own plan and they have desired their own plan verse 8 according to all the works which they have done since the day that i brought them up out of egypt even unto this day wherewith they have forsaken me and serve other gods so do they also unto thee now therefore hearken unto their voice how be it yet protest solemnly unto them and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them and samuel told all the words of the lord unto the people that asked of him a king and he said this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you he shall take your sons and appoint them for himself for his chariots to be his horsemen and some shall run before his chariot and he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties and i will set them to air his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots all of these are different offices in government and he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers and he will take your fields and your vineyards and your oliveyards even the best of them and give them to his servants and he will take the tent of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants and he will take your men servant and your maid servant and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work and he will take the tent of your sheep and you shall be his servants and you shall cry out in that day because of your king which you shall have chosen you and the lord will not hear you in that day that is why after you are cheated in election and you pray and fast nothing changes it because god told you emphatically that where human government and system is concerned i'm not a party to it there's no justice in that system because it is not god's system and this is to help some of you who are thinking of being politicians in the nearest future or you want to get involved with government and governance you must understand how the systems work so that you don't hurt yourself by building castles in the air you must know how things were designed to function so if that is where you believe you belong you know how to function there well god say even after they cheat you if you cry i will not answer because that's not my system that is human system and i'm not a party to it because that's not my will you ask for a king you ask for government in my plan i wanted all of you to be a kingdom of priests and kings so together you take care of this planet and dominate but you decided that you wanted human beings to rule over you are you following if you're following my teaching shout i hear you nevertheless the people refuse to obey the voice of samuel and they said nay but we will have a king over us that we also may be like all the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles and samuel had all the words of the people and he rehearsed them in the ears of the lord and the lord said to samuel hearken unto their voice make them a king and samuel said unto the men of israel go ye every man unto his city go back to your different local governments and contest election yeah since that is what you want hey are we together here yeah counselors go back uh, those that are vying for local government chairmanship go back those that want to be uh, in the senate go back to your senatorial district those of you that want to be in the house of assembly go back to your local government those of you that want to be in different offices of governance go back and win election in your world go back everybody to your place because that's the way human government is going to function and that is not my system that's not the system of god if there was anything like praying persecution of then jesus will have been the first to experience praying persecution of at the time of his birth mary and joseph and god will have prayed herod dead or they will have prayed herod out rather god asked that jesus should be taken out of that city and escape with jesus to egypt because you can't pray persecution of the only people
people that can tame persecution is government because government can usurp human will but the church won't do that and god bless you that the government is in sympathy with the persecutors in acts of the apostles they went to preach is it a bad thing to make a lame man walk acts chapter 3 they told the lame man silver and gold have we not in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up our when the man walked the, the pharisees and the sadducees were afraid because they thought these guys may soon contest for political office and the way they are gaining popularity they may overthrow our government they picked them put them in the room and give them the beating of their lives and warn them never to preach again in the name of jesus and the bible in chapter 4 said they came back to their company and they lifted up their voices to god in one accord and they said lord thou art god who by the mouth of david their servant has said why do they hid in rage and the people imagine vain things the kings and the rulers have set up themselves against god and against his christ now lord behold their threat behold their threatening he didn't say kill them or flush them out grant unto us that with boldness against persecution we may still preach your word if there's anybody that should have prayed persecution of it was that bunch but that bunch didn't all through the book of acts there was nowhere persecution was prayed off paul the apostle was to be killed the next day i mean was to be killed in the night they carry paul and put inside a basket and drop him through the window he escaped for his life why didn't paul the apostle of the new testament revelation pray away persecution i'm teaching here now that's why some of the prayers of fall and die in our churches today is antichrist they are not scriptural prayers because the greatest thing in the heart of god is to have all men to be saved all men some say but that man is wicked you too you were once wicked you were once wicked were you were you always born again Talk to me church were you always born again who did jesus die for he died for good men romans chapter 5 verse 7 for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet per adventure for a good man some will even dare to die but next verse god commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners christ died he didn't die for good people he died for sinners he died for evil people he died for wicked people why well, were yet sinners the gospel is not for good people the gospel is for sinners so if you pray for the sinners to die who will get the gospel and who are sinners witches and wizards who are sinners criminals thieves robbers who are criminals you know dubious people who are criminals criminals are evil people they are the ones jesus died for so you can't pray for them to die because the will of god for them is that they may be saved and god is not willing that any soul should perish but that all should come to repentance i'm teaching gospel here he said pray for those that curse you bless them bless them don't kill them bless them bless them that despitefully use you that you may be the children of your father hallelujah that you may be the children of your father he maketh the sun to shine on the good and on the bad that's your father hallelujah persecution goes with the gospel he said blessed are you when all men shall revile against you he said you're blessed why are you blessed because you will not retaliate that's why you're blessed you won't retaliate amen the love of god doesn't say do me or do you no that's what moses said an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth he said that is what moses said but jesus i say bless those that curse you bless those that curse you because the nature you have received does not have retaliation
it is the nature of your father no wonder he turned to those guys in the book of luke chapter 9 and rebuked them and said you know not what manner of spirit you are it is the spirit of sonship the spirit of adoption it is the spirit of god that makes you function like god amen praise god somebody understanding shout a better amen praise god so they went for human government man requested for human government yet in the mind of god he began to symbolically fulfill what he will do through david symbolically and prophetically god began to fulfill symbolically what he will do through david that is why nobody sat on the throne of david till jesus came nobody not david himself because that throne was not for david to sit on it was the throne that jesus was going to sit on why because god didn't want human government so even though david set the throne david didn't sit on it because if david had sat on it he would have been a king over the people but david didn't sit on it it was a throne reserved for jesus to sit on so that when he sits on all of us will be joined heirs with him on that throne and together we will reign forever i don't know if i'm teaching here yeah that's why nobody sat on the throne of david the throne of David was left empty until Jesus came. And there's a difference between the throne of David and the throne of Saul. The throne of Saul was human government. The throne of David was the kingdom of Christ. There are two different things. And Jesus sat on the throne of David. David foreshadowed that in prophecy. Acts 2.29 Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day therefore being a prophet and knowing that god had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he will raise up christ to sit where on his throne so the throne of david was vacant until christ came because that throne of david was a prophetic symbolical throne of the corporate rulership of the church as the kingdom of christ it was not human government the throne of Saul was human government the throne of David was a type of the government of Christ and his church are you understanding if you're hearing me say I hear you yeah it was a symbolical prophetic throne of Christ so David was a symbolic representation of what Jesus will do so earthly government is not god's will and that is why earthly rulers are called the princes of this world they are referred to by jesus as the princes of this world for had the princes of this world known they wouldn't have crucified the lord of glory he's talking about human governments when he wants to talk about the devil he calls him the prince of this world when he wants to refer to human rulers he calls them the princes of this world the princes of this world what are they called yeah how many of you know when jesus was arrested just before his crucifixion when they arrested him jesus said my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world i will have asked my father he will release angels they will dislodge all of you jesus by that simple statement make a differentiation between his kingdom and the kingdom of this world there are two kingdoms we're dealing with here we're dealing with the kingdom of christ and we're dealing with human government human government is man's desire the kingdom of christ is god's purpose if you understand see, i'm with you yeah you say my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world none of you can be able to arrest me none of you can even come close just ask for a legion of angels or just dismantle all of you right now thank you lord so what is god's plan god's plan is that all men on earth should have dominion over the earth how many men all somebody say i have dominion over this earth say that's the plan of god acts 2 31 to 36 he seen this before spake of the resurrection of christ that his soul was not left in hell neither his flesh did see corruption 
32 this jesus had god raised up whereof were all witnesses 33 therefore being by the right hand of god exalted and having received of the father the promise of the holy ghost he had set forth this which you now see and hear for david is not ascended into the heavens but he saith himself the lord said unto my lord sit thou on my right hand until i make thy foes thy footstool therefore let all house of israel know assuredly that god had made that same jesus whom you have crucified but lord and christ god has made him both lord and christ and he is seated on the throne of david until all his enemies are made his footstool amen i said amen all right so we are priests and kings we reign with christ somebody say i'm a priest say it very loud i'm a priest i'm a king i reign with christ right now over the earth and over demons said again i reign with christ right now say my authority is over the earth and over unclean spirits say i do not have authority over a fellow human matthew 20 25 but jesus called them unto him and said you know that the princes of the gentiles exercise dominion over them and they that are great exercise authority over them men exercising authority over men that's not god's system now that word exercise authority is a compound greek word it is k-a-t-a k-u-r-i-e-u-o it's used in two places in the bible acts 19 16 and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded talking about the seven sons of skiva the evil spirit exercised authority over the seven sons of skiva that is that is not supposed to be but the seven sons of skiva not knowing their authority went to trouble evil spirits so evil spirits exercise authority over the seven sons of skiva wounded them messed them up because the seven sons of skiva didn't know who they were they didn't know their authority first peter 5 3 neither as being lords over god's heritage but being examples to the flock god said men of god should not be lords should not be lords that a man of god should not make a member or a christian do something by force or against his will to make you do something by force or against your will is to lord it over you so he said they should not men of god should not be lords but examples because leadership in the kingdom of god is that he that will be chief among you must be your servant that's why all of you are sitting down here for one hour or more and i'm the one standing and talking and sweating what am i doing i'm serving you grace is that true are you with me here yeah, yeah not leadership by exercising authority but leadership by example and because it is leadership by example you are not compelled but you willingly follow do you understand you are not compelled but you are persuaded so with your consent you follow you follow with what with your consent you follow with your consent if you say i'm not going to come to service nobody comes to your house to beat you why nobody comes to your house to beat you because you submit willingly you come to church willingly the essence of teaching is to make you see reason why you have to do the things you do so that by understanding you are willing nobody is forcing you and if you say you don't want we leave you alone and look for those that are willing until god does a work in your heart of understanding are you in the house yeah nobody forces you in the day of my power my people shall be willing for it is god that worketh in you first of all he makes you willing he doesn't force you god doesn't force you i didn't want to prophesy 
how many of you have been in those funny churches? I, 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 I don't want to profit. Boom. Say, because I refused to prophesy, the spirit was disciplining me, beat me, and forced me to prophesy. There's no it's evil spirit. Spirit of God cannot force you. Yeah, that's why the Bible says resist him not. That means just a little resistance, he withdraws. Resist not the spirit. You know, he doesn't strive with man, he doesn't force you. So say, I didn't want to do the spirit of God, slap me, power. In fact, my face, my cheek almost fell out. No, evil spirit slap you. You better know he's slapping you. So that you can retaliate fast, fast. Because evil spirit has no right to slap you. So if evil spirit slap you, grab it and give it the beating of his life because you have authority over the earth and over evil spirits. That's what I told you. If they press you, stand up and press them. They have no right to press you. No evil spirit has a right to press you. You know what press is? Press is as in press. Somebody shout, I have power to trample over serpents, scorpions, evil spirits, and devils. I'm in charge here. The only thing you don't have authority over is the will of another man. I'm teaching here. Yeah. Any attempt to have power over the will of a man makes you a witch. Makes you a wizard. Brings you into the class of satanic oppression. Peter cut off the air of somebody. What did Jesus do? So, oh, you, you, Peter, this thing is not by force. So he took the air, put it back. He said, they that kill by the sword shall go by the sword. Don't be doing like that. Let's go. Jesus didn't say, Peter, <laughs> you're a good guy. Why didn't you remove the other one? No, no, he put it back. As much as God wants everybody to be saved, he does not force people. He appeals to people. He appeals to people until they see reason to willingly submit. I'm teaching you. God doesn't force anybody. So you can't use your prayer and be forcing somebody. Any prayer like that is bewitchment. Don't grab somebody in prayer and say, I slap you in Jesus' name. Kneel down. You must send that paper. No, that's witchcraft. You don't force people in prayer. So you don't force people in prayer. Amen. I said, amen. amen. The kingdom of God today is where? In Christ. Where is the kingdom of God? It's in Christ. Where are you? In Christ. So we and Christ are reigning together in the kingdom of God. Somebody say, I hear you. Uh-huh. Ephesians 2 verse 2 wherein in time past you walked according to the cause of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the loss of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others that's where we were that's where we were that is the realm where unbelievers are so listen very carefully the kingdom of satan is in the hearts of men what about the kingdom of god the kingdom of god also is in the hearts of men that's where the kingdom of god is the hearts of men give me ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh. Hey, answer me against. So that boss in your office is not the reason why you are not promoted. So stop abusing your boss and eyeing your boss and insulting your boss. He's not flesh and blood. If that human being is not the reason why you are hindered it's just that that human being didn't know enough he gave out his authority to an unclean spirit to use it to stop you are you with me here we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high not places in high there are spiritual wickedness the spiritual wickedness in people that are in high positions spiritual wickedness in high not places there are no places it's either a place and take note against the rulers of the darkness the rulers of what 
the darkness so there are rulers their rulership as unclean spirits is where there is darkness where is darkness where there is no sound doctrine where there is no teaching of the word because the absence of the word of god is the absence of light because it is the entrance of the world that giveth light so the rulers of the darkness are ruling in places where there is no sound teaching and because there's no teaching people wallow in darkness and because they wallow in darkness the rulers of the darkness are taking advantage of the darkness to rule men using the instrument of darkness and these demons like darkness they lack ig ignorance they like a place where people don't know the truth where people don't know their left from their right and anywhere there is darkness there are rulers who take advantage of that darkness to rule the people where there's wrong doctrine where people are taught that even as a child of god you're possessed there are the rulers of darkness taking advantage of that illiteracy where people are taught that even as a christian you need deliverance there are rulers of darkness taking advantage of that your darkness because you can't be born again and be looking for deliverance if after you're born again you need deliverance then what is born again born again is not an updated version of an unbeliever born again is a brand new man that has no past glory to god we reign who reigns here lift your right hand and shout i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness i reign in this life i didn't hear your amen thank you lord the kingdom of god is in christ where did i say the kingdom of god is in christ so romans 13 verse 1 let every soul be subject unto the higher powers for there is no power but of god the powers that be are ordained of god what he's simply saying is that since you have decided to select human government somehow somehow god will still walk through the human government did you hear that somehow somehow god will still walk through the human government because when rulers in government decide to yield themselves to be used of god to better mankind god will use them I don't know if you understand so that's what he's talking about here but that's not even the subject follow me you'll see the subject of discussion verse 2 whosoever therefore resisted the power resisted the ordinance of god and they that resisted shall receive to themselves damnation this is what kenneth Hagee called the permissive will of god why it is called permissive is because god is saying this is not what i want for you but because you have selected to work under this I will permit you and try within my goodness to still be good to you within this system that I didn't want you to function inside. But I cannot guarantee 100% security. Are you following here? I cannot guarantee 100% security because I'm not the one running that system. But I will try to work within the system to still be good to you even though I didn't want you there. It's called the permissive will of God. Verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. He's talking about civility and orderliness in society. That's what Paul is discussing here. Civility and orderliness in society so that society can function well and allow people to thrive and fulfill the purpose of God irrespective of the human government in place. Are you with me here? Alright, so next verse. Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath but also for conscience sake. For this cause, pay ye tribute. The subject of discussion here is tax. Paul is trying to make you see that if you're in a society and the society say pay tax 14%, don't escape tax because if you try to dodge tax and they catch you, they bear not the sword in vain. For this cause, pay ye tribute or tax also for the um, God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. That's to say, they serve you in society by making sure that through your tax, they provide you social amenities that help you to still live a good life. If you understand, say, I hear you. So the subject here is taxation. All the things Paul said in chapter 13 of Romans was to make you see that you need to pay tax. And somebody say, how important is that? Let me show you how important it is. 
They brought a coin to Jesus and said, should we pay tax? Should we pay tax? That's sure how important paying your tax is. Should we pay tax? Jesus said, whose inscription is on that coin? They say Caesar. He said, render to Caesar that which is Caesar's and render to God that which is God. That's pay your tax. Don't pray your tax off. If they catch you with all your prayer, you'll be in prison. Don't dodge it. Pay it. Then they say, okay, if what you're teaching us is correct, Jesus, pay tax. Jesus said, Peter, there's a fish by the river. When you get there, it will open his mouth. Take the coin and pay them their tax. Jesus paid tax. He didn't pray it off. I'm teaching good. I said, I'm teaching good. So if you're doing business in a society and you need to pay your tax, pay your tax. Don't pray it off. Be a good citizen because this government, since that's what human beings have chosen to rule us, somehow, somehow, they still help us to have civility and order. And somehow, somehow, in, in societies where government is good, they provide social amenities that make for a comfortable well-being in the society. They provide electricity. They provide roads. They provide water. They provide uh, enabling environments. And above all, they provide security. Is that true? And with all of these facilities, you can at least fulfill the purpose of God. I'm teaching good here. So that's what Paul was teaching here. We have to do with human government. And we're dealing with prayer. Don't forget, we're still dealing with prayer. Because when you begin to pray concerning all kinds of things, things like this will arise and you have to know how to put them in the place of prayer. Because if you don't know how to handle the different aspects of your human, of your human authority on the earth, you can never have an effective prayer life. So, you've got to pay your tax. Touch somebody, tell them, pay your tax. Yeah, pay your tax. It's very important. Amen. I said amen. In Matthew 22, 16 to 20, and they said unto him, their disciples with the Herodians saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of man. Tell us therefore what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? If the governor comes, should we stand up in this church or not? Should we honor the governor or just disregard him? Since government is man's plan, it's not the will of God. So if we see the governor, should we respect him? That's why they were asking Jesus. If you hear the governor's siren coming and you see the expert riders, should you clear or just stay on the road? If the governor do too much, you pray him to die. What did Jesus answer? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, you hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They said unto him, Caesar. Then said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God. So when you see the governor siding, what do you do? Clear quickly and salute if you can. But adventure, he will even stop and give you a small offering. <laughs> Say, Nice, nice guy. You are a good citizen. Praise God. You've got to do what you need to do in the society. You've got to be a, a, an obedient person to the laws of the land. That is part of being a Christian. And that is part of being a person that has guaranteed answers to prayer. Don't just live anyhow. Eh? Did you hear what I said? You're working in an office. The office opens by 7. When should we be there? Be there by 7. 5 minutes to 7. Don't go late. And then when you go late, they give you query. You kneel down. Agaba dogaba. Eh eh. Uh, uh, give to Caesar. I'm teaching good here now. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. So if Caesar says 7 o'clock, what do you do? 7 o'clock. Because that is the only way you can guarantee your job in that office. If not, they will sack you and you will be out of job and you will be depending on hand-me-downs until the next job which may take another 7 months. Or one year. Or three years. And you will suffer a challenging moments and poverty seasons that God didn't want you to have, but you created it by yourself, and then you will do tarry nights that are uncalled for because you did not give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Let me ask all of you who will bless you physically and financially and materially? Is it God or man? Who will give you a job? Okay. 
Who will marry you? Is it God? Spirit. Who will marry you? Uh, then you must know how to relate with men. You must learn to relate with men. If you know how to relate with men, your prayer points will be reduced. There are people that will just remember you for good and just bless you. And there's your attitude that will make somebody, if he remember you, he will look for how to spoil the thing that is working for you. And God will not stop him. God won't stop him. Why? Because God does not overrule people's will. That's why somebody can sit down on your file for 10 years and not sign it. You're fasting and praying. He's sitting there and he's growing fat. <laughs> Is it true? Yeah, because God does not force men. I'm teaching good. 2016 will be the best year of your life. Amen. Oh, that amen is not born again. Amen. You will harvest favor from every direction. Amen. Good things are coming to your house. Amen. Acts chapter 5 verse 18. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they had heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and thought. But the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told. Saying, the prison truly found we shot with all safety and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the people and the chief priest had these things, they, they doubted of them whereon to this will grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council and, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So there are times human authorities will say some things that contradict what we believe and we refuse to obey them and that is where persecution comes we must obey god rather than men what happened they were put in prison by the time they came the next morning the prison was intact but the, the guys were not inside a miracle took place <laughs> they came back and told the guys said we went there the prison is shut everything intact but the guys are not inside while they are contemplating somebody come and say hey look those guys who put in prison yesterday they are preaching in the temple he said go and bring them they went and brought them he said didn't we say you should not teach in that name look at how you have filled jerusalem with your doctrine the doctrine of christ oh, yeah. then the guys look at them said we must obey god rather than men that's we don't care whatever you want to do do your worst right now let me show you another situation where government can be disobeyed daniel in babylon they said nobody should pray to any god other than the god of babylon and daniel opened his window towards jerusalem and began to pray to the god of israel and because of that he was thrown in the lions then that's persecution because he defied an instruction of natural rulers that contradict the instruction of the superior ruler so there are times we disobey man-made authorities to obey god if you heard what i said say i hear you and sometimes when that happens that is where persecution comes and if you endure in that persecution god shows up what about shadrach meshach and abednego it was the same situation amen are you understanding that there's a difference between the kingdom of god and the kingdom of this world the way we pray has to reflect in some of these understandings that i'm bringing your way tonight so now the next question i know some of you may want to ask is so therefore how does god exercise his authority god exercises his rule by faith in the hearts of men by faith he does not compel obedience he appeals god appeals to the will of men he appeals to the heart of men he does not force people but he appeals to them with his goodness with his kindness and with his patience the world uses force god uses ministry he ministers to you how does god win over men by wooing you he will woo you and woo you and woo you 
just like a boy will woo a girl he will woo you and woo you all of a sudden you do something you are in trouble he will come to you in the trouble he will help you out of the trouble situation will arise he will follow you he will help you are you with me here what is god doing he is with you and that's why the bible says it's his goodness that leads us to repentance i'm teaching here contrary to what people will say how many of you remember when you were not yet born again you didn't even know the gospel you didn't know christ you still saw god's goodness how many of you remember that some of you did things that should have taken away your life but instead you were kept is that true what is that good have you heard of people who drank poison and they didn't affect them that they took poison yet they survived is god still saying look it's too early to give up on you i still need you here i want to help you it's the goodness of god praise the lord so how does god get people to do what he wants by appealing to them what does he do and that's why sometimes it can take long it can take long because god can be patient forever he can wait and wait and wait and wait because of his love how does god also get people to do what he wants john 16 8 and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin that word reprove is convinced he will convince the world he will appeal to the world and convince the world of sin for example noah how many years did it take for noah to get the gospel to nineveh 120 years of preaching noah preached for 120 years god waited 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 and the more noah was preaching the more nineveh refused to hear the gospel noah kept preaching noah kept preaching 120 years god was patient after 60 years of preaching the only thing noah succeeded in doing was his family 70 years nobody you can imagine a man in ministry for 100 years does he have a church of five people 100 years of preaching 120 years god say at this juncture these people even if we stay here for ten thousand years they can never be saved noah enter the ark let's close this chapter the destruction of the world of noah was a typology of the end of the world because today the ark of god is open and preachers are preaching we are preaching we are preaching for people to believe in jesus which was a type of the ark the ark was jesus but the people rejected jesus and when the door was closed rain started falling that's vengeance the moment the gate of salvation is closed the rain of god will begin to fall that is the great white throne judgment that is where people will be thrown inside hellfire together with hell hell eh? hell hellfire will be thrown into the lake of fire you never see something do you understand you know hellfire i'm not talking of cooking fire in the kitchen i'm talking of red hot hellfire will be carried hellfire will be carried and thrown inside the lake of fire so for the lake of fire to swallow hellfire means the lake of fire is senior to hellfire why punishment for rejecting christ i'm teaching good tonight if you're understanding shout i hear you 120 years of patience by god waiting for people and nobody accepted only noah's house animals even obeyed some animals two two animals entered the ark animals believed in jesus he said jesus is lord animals say, mm, meh, meh. they entered but human being didn't believe so it is clear that god doesn't want people to be subjected he wants people to submit there's a difference between subjecting people and submission to subject is by force submission is willingly is by your will even in marriage we don't subject our spouses we submit we submit lovingly willingly you don't force your wife to submit and a wife don't force your husband to submit it's not by force forcing a wife to do what she has not willingly accepted is witchcraft forcing a husband to do what he has not willingly accepted is witchcraft yes you are permitted to persuade him you can persuade and appeal until he sees reason are we together here some husbands will tell you why if you don't do it let me tell you your box is going back to your mother's house 
right now no that is slavery that's not what the bible calls submission submission is an act of the will i'm teaching here and this is for those of you that are planning to get married and this is for those of you that are already married and this is for those of you that got married without marriage counseling you know some people just marry like that no marriage counseling no training so they marry and they want to live their marriage the way their father lived with their mother your mother and father may have had a good marriage but they are not the bible we run our homes based on the word of god that's why every husband in the church must be taught scripture on how to take care of your wife and every wife must be taught from scripture on how to take care of her husband so we can have kingdom homes on the earth kingdom families and when parents don't know how to raise up children they force children when you force your children to pray and read the bible the day they leave that house they will throw away the bible they will throw it because forcing your children is developing hatred in them for that bible you don't force them make them see reason let them see the goodness of god let them know that god is good let them know that god loves them take time show them who god is then share your own personal experience with god and what god has done with you as a parent then take them on that journey without persuasion they will look for god I'm, i don't know if i'm teaching here huh? but parents will tell the child you are a child of the devil stand up my friend i told you 5 a.m i'm going to pray kneel down you won't stand up till 12 o'clock today you're not going to school take it easy with them pray for them share your life with them let them see how things are working in your life begin to show them to also talk to god let them begin to learn in little little ways it's not by force you nobody force you nobody forced you you grew to an age of accountability and made your choice don't force your children they will learn your life is a greater message if you are indeed living the life of christ as they are looking at you they will start admiring you and they will start asking you questions hebrews 13 17 obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for the watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you you see when you obey me as your pastor or a wife obeys her husband or a husband submits to his wife because the bible says we should submit one to another when a wife submit to her husband or the husband submit to the wife what you're doing is you are giving your husband or wife your authority to use you are giving him space within your authority it doesn't mean you are a fool it just means that you have acknowledged love you have acknowledged god you have acknowledged the word of god and you have submitted your authority to the word of god let your husband you know love you and get have his way same thing with wife same thing with your pastor it's not because your pastor is more intelligent than all of you that is why you submit it's because you recognize that you must be under an authority an authority that is recognized by god an authority that will build ministry and doctrine into you so you submit to that authority and sometimes we may even make judgment that is not favorable to you but because you acknowledge god in that relationship you submit to it yeah anyway human beings are huh? they will do things that you don't like it's not everybody that will do things that you like and marriage problems can be resolved without too much prayer if we understand how to submit to one another there are so many marriage crises that people are praying and fasting for that are uncalled for just simple love and, and submission to one another can solve too many marital crises in the home too many arguments in the house can be cheaply dissolved when we come to that place of understanding how god wants us to function and there'll be nothing like unanswered prayer everything will just function well i declare the blessing over every one of you whose amen is like thunder be blessed be blessed no nothing will hinder your prayers in this life anymore i didn't hear that amen somebody so say with, with me very loud there is a difference between praying for men and praying for things and evil spirits now let me ask you evil spirits do you appeal to them what do you do you cast them out your body is making a peace be still you command your body it will obey you did you hear what i said yeah you want money money come forth and then when you call the money say father i thank you that that man or woman that you have designed to use for me right now circumstances are working around the person to give the person a reason to give to me 
you didn't hear what i said stand up let's close circumstances are working around the person to give the person a reason how many of you know that circumstances can make somebody give you three million and be happy so listen to me right now as i'm speaking to you by the power of the holy spirit circumstances are working in your favor amen. you're not shouting that amen. amen circumstances are working in your favor amen. there are people that god is setting up right now as you're hearing the sound of my voice circumstances are working and working and working in your favor and supernaturally they will have to bless you to get you to get them to do some things amen. if that amen is louder receive that favor this week receive that favor this week receive that favor this week in the name of jesus doors are opening for you people that forgot you circumstances will force them to remember you situations will force them to remember you and they shall remember you for good i'm already praying one of those hundred percent answers guarantee i say circumstances will force people to remember you and in remembering you they shall do you good amen. if that amen is louder receive it by grace amen. i prophesy as your amen will come like thunder this week you will meet an angel amen. this week you will meet an angel amen. this week you will meet an angel hey, you will meet an angel amen. i release angelic interventions in your life receive the ministry of angels in your life forward backward sideways maroka to nega every desire of your heart i release human beings and angels to get involved with your life you are blessed you are blessed you are blessed in jesus precious name can i hear that amen like thunder